everyone. We made it to our second episode and we're really excited. <laughs> First of all, we just want to thank everyone who watched. We were totally blown away by the response we got. We loved all the comments. Uh, we got some constructive feedback, which was awesome. We got to share some sheep stories. And uh, yeah, we I think like most podcasters, yeah. vloggers, we assumed nobody would watch it. Except for our mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's probably half of the views, but hey, we're just going to roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as a thank you, we're going to have a little giveaway later on um, in this episode, and we're not going to make you do anything terrible to participate either. <laughs> so we just want to also mention that we did start a Ravelry group for the podcast, so you can find us under Fleece and Harmony on Ravelry. Uh, my Ravelry name is Jen Taren, and Kim's is... Kay Doherty Smith. Love to have you reach out and become <laughs> our friends on Ravelry and also join our group if you're enjoying the podcast. Um, and we have decided for the next few episodes, we're actually going to go through the yarn making process step by step. And there are a lot of steps, yeah. a surprising yeah. number, even before we bought the mill. I don't think we had any idea. No. Well, I guess we probably never thought about it. No. Much. No. Like most knitters. Yeah. And <laughs> since the, the wool issue is quite hot right now in all of our groups with the work that Clara Parks has been doing around helping to educate people on... Um, humane shearing and so on. We're actually going to start right from the beginning with the shearing of the sheep. We're going to share a little video of our sheep being shorn and we're also going to have a little chat with one of our vets. We do tend to work with several because mm -hmm. we have a wide variety of different species living here on our farm. Um, but we picked our vet Kim because she's our on-call vet for lambing and generally does most of our sheep work yeah. um, these days. Okay, so we're going to go through our FOs. Finished so, objects. Yes. 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 So, <laughs> one of the things that we were advised um, was to explain what some of these little, what the knitting lingo is, because we do want knitters of all levels to be able to enjoy the podcast. So an FO, it sounds like it could be something bad, but it's actually just a finished object. Yes, it's a good thing. And uh, I have two. I don't know what happened to me this week. I was all over the place. Christmas cast on itis, like the worst you've ever seen. Um, I got lots of guilt stares from my husband for not working on his sweater. Uh, just general lack of attention span stuff. So the first thing I finished um, right after we filmed last time was this shawl, which is called um, Hostie, and it's by a designer, Susanna I.C., I think she's listed as. And um, basically this, we don't buy yarn that often. I mean, we went to Rhinebeck and came back with a set of Coco Knit stitch maker markers. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> so because of course we can, which we, we didn't can even make. buy there. No, the yeah, show. we bought it at the Mermaid's Pearl in, yeah. in uh, is it New Hampshire, I think. Yeah. Anyway, great cute little shop. Anyway, so I did buy this yarn though, because Longway Homestead, that's another Canadian Belfast mini mill starting up, ran sort of a GoFundMe campaign for their mill startup, which is really smart. And yeah. uh, sometimes we wish we had done that, but yeah. once again, we were afraid nobody would, would reply, <laughs> yeah, would participate, yeah. But they did, and I'm sure they, um, they had a lot of fun doing it. So I bought uh, Leo the Llama, I got two skeins, that was my, um, my sort of gift for contributing. And I wanted to turn it into something really pretty because I think Leo being brown and being a llama probably got, gets overlooked next to all the fancy little Shetland sheep she's got. <laughs> and a long way. So I knit this really pretty frilly um, shawl. And I, <laughs> I also added some Swarovskis just because I thought that would give it a little extra panache. It is a little bit smaller than the gauge recommended for the project, but I wanted to make sure I had enough to do it, like to complete it. And it's a I it's, actually think you had to back out, right? I've knit it three times. Yes. So. <laughs> At least. Uh, and it's not difficult, but for some reason, I had some issues with my uh, <laughs> the directions of my lace stitches at points, and Kim is like a surgeon when it comes to um, digging down through slip slip knits and things so she, even she had to help and get involved to finish this project but it's really cute and uh, and it is quick I had 400 yards available I think you'd be safer with sort of 450 it's a worsted weight um, project it's really nice straight with the llama hair in it because of course it's a dense um, mm -hmm. fiber and not as crimpy as wool and yeah, so I finished that and I, I was really happy. And the edge on it is a little bit of a help. Yeah, I even had to add, um, I had I had to go down a gauge 
like a needle size below what was recommended. I ended up with 13 inches and it's actually supposed to be 15. Um, and I added a little bit of our alpaca blend to the yeah, bottom. It's to the be same yarn that I'm doing my hearth with. Your stool. Right. Yeah, yeah, my stool. Yep, so it's um 33% alpaca blend that we did up. And I think I might add some up here just to help with the curling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's finished, but I might, I might enhance it slightly. <laughs> So that was the first thing I finished. And then I knit, of course, the Memories hat by Olive Knits, which was, is this? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, I'm okay trying on hats, even though I can't see how they look. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, it's by Olive Knits, and it's part of the Making Stories and Friends Winter 2018 collection, which we were lucky enough to get selected as a yarn partner for. So, of course, we had to knit something out of it, and um, I chose a different color. It's actually knit in seagull in the collection, but I wanted something really cheerful. And this is our Buttercups um, colorway in the flock fingering. Mm -hmm. And this one was really, really fun. Uh, it's a pretty simple pattern, but you do have to be careful. It's not good to rip it out or try to drill down, as I call it, through the <laughs> through the column because there's um, like a knit front and back every second stitch. And so when you get all those loops happening and everything, I just straight ripped it out if I made a mistake. And there's a couple in here, but it hides them really well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> got off track a little, but it was really easy to get back on with this stitch pattern. So yeah. So I finished this off and I just, it was really fun. It was really nice to think about buttercups in the middle of the winter and with all the weather we've been having. So this is a, this is a good one. See, who knows what I'm going to look like now. So I think that's it for my FOs or yeah. my finished objects. So now Kim will go through one of hers. Yeah. So I was planning on showing my hearth uh, stool today as an FO, <laughs> a finished object, but didn't happen. So my husband is learning to knit and I spent a lot of time helping him actually uh, with his project because he's going pretty quickly. He's graduated and now he's doing a hat. So I was helping him with that quite often. Um, so I dug out a finished project um, that was done um, a little while ago. It's actually a, a sweater for my husband um, and it's knit in our um, slate Aaron, the signature Aaron in slate, and we also use I also used Autumn Birch in the signature Aaron for the uh, for the motif. Um, it's a uh, it's called Roscoe by Martin Story, and it's actually a free pattern on the Rowan website, so it's really fantastic. And um, I like to try to learn something new with every project that I'm doing. So I've been knitting for a long time, but I would say I wasn't a very accomplished knitter. I was like a lot of people, I just knit. I never did swatches. I have a lots of sweaters that don't fit properly. And <laughs> so I really made it, and uh, I really made it a, a goal to be able to do a sweater that actually fit. And I also did, it's my first sweater that I've done in pieces in the flat and then sewed together. Um, everything else before that had been um, in the round bottom up raglan sleeves or drop sleeves. So this was uh, the first project that I actually did all of those things with. Um, and it turned out really nice. It's super, super warm. And uh, it's also uh, like very cozy. Again, it's very typical of the way that our yarn knits up. It's very soft and, and uh, squishy. Um, lots of air trapped in there. So uh, <laughs> you don't need a lot of, uh, lot of layers with it. And uh, I, was, I was really happy the way that it turned out. So um, he's really happy with it so actually his hat that he's knitting is match going to match his uh, sweater that I knit for him so so that's that and I don't know if there's anything else I should say no this is a that. real showstopper though I think he gets stopped on the yes. street wearing it because yes. the motif is so beautiful and of course Martin Story is an amazing designer but yeah. I think it's it's only fair of us to say that Ken actually is knitting without a pattern so yes. he, he yes. learned the stitches and he's now sort of designed or certainly at least heavily modified his own cowl and hat that matches yes. this, this. Yes. so yes. I don't know what to tell you it's pretty yeah. cool it's pretty yeah. amazing he's super into it and yeah. he keeps asking for a set of chewy goo needles <laughs> and uh, we've been making him feel really bad about that by sort of modifying the old we walked uphill both ways to school story right. and we're right. like we purled in the round Yes. <laughs> For years before we got our Chiagu needles. Yes. Just 
Simmer down there, buddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, uh, I might, uh, I think we're actually maybe going to write up the pattern for the hat and the yeah. cowl and we'll, we'll post it and we'll have him show, show it maybe yeah. when he's done. It's, but. it's kind of cute and modern. He's just developing his own aesthetic. It's amazing. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, and he's out there wearing it right now, shoveling snow because we just had a huge snowfall on him. Yeah. 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 Usually cool. we make jokes about our commute to work because our shop is literally on our farm i don't know what how far is that to the house 100 yards maybe 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 so the commute is never really bad but actually today it was a little <laughs> bit of a thing my stuff blew over the yard a big wind gust came and it was really like i was like okay well this really is yeah i had to get like fully dressed for the winter yeah. day so i think they can tell that's legit by looking at our hair yeah yeah so <laughs> it was it was very neat when we left we should tell people about pei a little bit Right now? Storm chips. Oh, that's, yeah, okay. That's quite a segue. So actually, in the Maritimes, which is where we live, so the Maritime provinces are um, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island, right. where we are. And there's a phenomenon known as storm chips. So basically, when there's a big snow snowstorm coming, somebody created the hashtag storm chips. Right. And literally, the store shelves are bare. Yes. So potato, we're talking about potato, potato, potato chips. chips. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it's a thing. So we actually have a friend that goes to the store to see how credible the weather report is going to be because if the chip shelves are empty, she goes, oh, okay. It's really, it's people, serious. Everybody's believing people that. People believe. <laughs> because maritime weather is notoriously difficult to predict. So we, yeah. we look at the weather, but we can't, you kind of have to feel it out. You're like, how are the horses behaving? You know, yeah. like, is this legit? And the storm yeah. chip aisle is the way to yeah. go. It's, it's the storm 100% chip. 100% accurate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and we did have a big storm last night. And the day before, our, our uh, farm was just a mud hole. So yes. the temperature hovers around zero uh, here a lot. And it's actually very inconvenient. I think frozen and stay frozen through to March yeah. would definitely be preferable for animal keeping yeah. uh, and for keeping their wool clean because yes. uh, ours are outside year round. So, um, so yeah, it's been an interesting couple days, but the good news is we have power. So we're able right. to do this. That's so that's right. great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have two whips as well. As I mentioned, I did cast on things and finish things. And anyway, uh, the sweater, this famous husband's sweater, um, I... I never understood progress keepers, but now I understand they're for, for vloggers. <laughs> so this is where I was, where we left off, and mm, uh, we're in trouble. I kind of think that's probably an unsatisfactory amount of progress for two weeks. According to Stephen. Yeah. Especially. Um, <laughs> I'm struggling with the the hand thing. If anyone has advice on how, and I, I don't think I'm knitting particularly tight, but I, and I, I tried like a needle with uh, like a shorter needle, but then I didn't really have the sweater so heavy when I tried to knit it with my shorties. That did create less leverage on my hands. So mm -hmm. it was more comfortable in that sense, but it was harder to manage the bulk of the sweater. Um, so basically I'm making excuses and uh, I can only work on it for short periods of time. It's like 50% my hands and 50% attention span. Right. Oh, well. Maybe. 25.75. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's been bad. I swear I'm going to get back to it. Oh, but we have some other exciting things coming up, and I actually, but yeah, I probably just lied about that. <laughs> but I try and work on it at least every couple of days, and it fits so yes. far. So we tried it on, and I thought like we had enough to kind of like put it over um, the, the, the important measurement area <laughs> and uh, it's looking good so I am excited um, I do find it hard to knit the same thing twice right in a row because it's all exciting the first time you do it and then the yeah. second time you know you're you're doing it again you're and perfecting I, that's that's how you would look <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the thrills okay so that's an ongoing whip and then our friend our very good friend Simone of Sand and Sky Creations designed a pattern with our yarn um, and I was so excited because she did take a little bit of a break from designing for a while and she does the most beautiful color work patterns and um, I'm super excited to start this this one and it's called the solstice hat 
because it was the winter, it's the winter solstice yes, coming up. It was launched. Yeah. yeah. So um, and it's on her Ravelry store, and I'll put all the information below. Um, and this is my very first color work project, so I've never done color work. I am doing it one handed, like I'm not doing the fancy continental on your left bit because I was worried about my gauge and stuff. But it's so fun. It's mm -hmm. kind of like doing a crossword puzzle or something, like just following the chart and yeah. doing. Um, I don't know. I'm really enjoying it, and I'm actually almost done. Nice. Uh, because I've been working on this. There was no progress keeper on that two weeks ago, but now you're almost done. Yeah, I only started it yesterday. Yeah. Morning. All right, yeah, I cast it on Monday morning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, check out Simone's other designs. She does the most beautiful color yeah, work stuff. and she's she, really talented. Yeah, she yeah. picked out these colors, blue poppy and uh, amethyst brooch, which is a new colorway I'm going to show in a little bit. And uh, we, I would never put these together, but yeah. she's just brilliant with it. And if you go look at her um, Ravelry page, you'll see, or her Instagram, yeah. you'll see all kinds of other really cool stuff that she does. So I was really excited to get to do um, one of her projects. So that will definitely be done by next time. All right. Okay, so those are my whips, and you, of yeah. course, have your same yes. whip. My same whip, and I didn't put a progress marker on it, but now I wish I did because I actually did knit quite a bit uh, on this. I had the last time we were here, I actually had um, two and a half repeats left to do, and I'm on the last uh, the the last ten rows of the last repeat, so it is almost done. And I really, I really, I should have been able to finish it, but I didn't. I guess we're making lots of excuses today. Sorry. So there's not much more to say about it. It will be a finished project <laughs> for the uh, for the next podcast for sure. But you know, I what I discovered. I talked about the cables and cabling without a needle, which was kind of the thing I wanted to learn when I was started this project. Which I now it's really long. So I now <laughs> think I can check that box. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I really, I, what I'm really appreciating right now is that it's a, a knit to pearl one edging and it's ha kind of has this little bit of a, um, it curls over a little bit. So it's making a really interesting edging, which I'll show in more detail when it's done and blocked oh, properly yeah. and stuff. But uh, the, it's, it's amazing some of the most simple things turn out to be interesting it's just like a small detail but it it's really... like a cheater eye cord yes exactly yeah. that's exactly what it's like and it has these really nice uh you don't slip anything at the on the salvage edge and it has just this nice little bump that goes yeah. along it it's really it's really it's very nice. tight go ash yeah, yeah very cool. exactly so again um, you'll put all the information below yeah. but the hearth uh, stole pattern by ash alberg of sunflower knit and uh, we're using our uh, mantle yarn which is in our special collection that we launched for the fall uh, this year and 33 percent alpaca and our lamb's wool so, yeah and yeah. as usual we wish you could have smell a vision and feel a vision for all yeah. of these things like everybody yeah. does when they're watching a yarn or a knitting podcast but uh you'll just have to take our word for it yeah. and i'm not going to bother to hold up the whole thing to show the cables because next week it will be finished and we'll yeah. do like close-up pictures and stuff like that so so she says okay. yeah no it's going to be done <laughs> that's for sure good. all right so now we're just going to talk about um our little giveaway so we just really wanted to thank everybody for tuning in the support is so important. It's so vulnerable to put yourself on camera. I used to have a morbid fear of public speaking altogether, but I find once you become a farmer, your um, perspective on things gets pretty real. Uh, so I'm just, whatever, I have sheep to feed and you know, you just kind of let go of all that old baggage kind of from your former life. So, um, but we were still nervous and we really did appreciate all the support. Uh, and it's so great because I'll tell you another thing about Prince Edward Island. It is lonely out here in the winter. So yeah. we might go days without seeing somebody other than the four of us. Right. And uh, we do everything together and we do get along remarkably well, according to some people, I guess, for a family business. That they find it remarkable. They find it remarkable. We don't find yeah. it really remarkable, but... No, we actually like each other. It's been six years. We feel like we've kind of, we're kind of over the hump. Yes. But it's lonely. It's lonely out here. And uh, we don't... Like a lot of the local knitters don't drive out from Charlottetown, which would be the nearest city. It's about a half an hour drive. And so there's kind of no one to talk to other than ourselves. Right. And, you know, we already know everything. So it's great to we just know get... everything? Well, that we're up to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we so appreciate the engagement. It's like yeah. a it's like a favor to us to get to talk to other people, honestly. And yeah. when a poor soul wanders in here, 
Yes. Let me tell you, yes. they are backing out the door slowly, like just trying to get away from us because <laughs> we're like every topic, you know, ah, everything that we've wanted to say to somebody yes. uh, in the last few weeks all comes out and it's really quite funny. But anyway, so to make a long story short, we're going to be giving away this set of Swarovski uh, stitch markers and our mom does the beading on these and she lives over in Nova Scotia where we're originally from and it's got a cute little sheep progress keeper which we yeah. didn't understand but now yeah. we do yeah and it comes on a little mini kilt pin which I've actually used as a shawl pin in a pinch um so they're really cute yeah and a so, stitch holder you can use it as a stitch holder. yes you could use it as a little stitch holder yeah. yep um so yeah we're gonna give this away and all you have to do to be entered is be a subscriber and comment on this video below and we'd love it if you would tell us what your favorite project was from today's episode or how you found us or you know introduce yourself if we've met you here at the shop in the past we're kind of wondering where all these viewers came from to be honest yeah. uh, and we do get a tremendous number of visitors in the summertime but it would be really nice just to hear from everybody it's really just a thank you and uh, yeah we'll announce the winner next next episode yeah. Okay, so now we've been joined by um, one of the vets we work with, Dr. Kim Ryan, and we're just going to talk with her a little bit about um, being a country vet and what it's like um, helping sheep producers look after their sheep. So welcome, Kim. Thank you yeah. for agreeing to come in. <laughs> She's really, really busy, so we're fortunate that it was a big snowstorm yes. and we knew it was happening. Lots of snow and wind out there today, so things are quiet. Yes. yes. It's yeah. always a pleasure to see her inside a warm place because usually we have all our conversations in the barn. Yeah. yeah. We, we love our pets, but we don't like having to call them unexpectedly. Yes. Yes. I think that's fair in to say. In the middle of the night. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. So first of all, we just want to ask you what you like about sheep because we know you you love working with sheep oh, so you. yeah, yeah. Um, well I, I've loved sheep since I was a kid and I just think when you look at them they just always look like they're smiling that's just the way <laughs> yes. that they're made so how can you not love something that always looks like it's yeah. smiling right yeah. and I've worked with cows my whole life and um, that and I love it but sheep are like small versions of that almost they're yeah. easy to handle and they're ruminants and they're lovely yeah. yeah they're just cheerful they are yeah they're gosh happy. darn it nothing yeah. faces them no <laughs> yeah it's true it's true yeah. so what, what made you decide when you went in through veterinary school which is obviously a very challenging uh course yeah. um what made you decide to be like stay out here in the rural areas and be a country vet well, I grew up on a farm, so uh, I'm used to just being out in the burns all the time. And um, when I went to vet school, I remember in my vet school interview, they said, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a large animal vet. There mm -hmm. was just never any question about mm -hmm. that. And so I loved PEI since I was little, and I moved here, and I just never left. Yeah. <laughs> and I worked in clinics, and I did mixed practice for 10 years, and I just was not happy unless I was out on the road. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I love being out in the barns and driving from farm to farm and working with mm. small producers that you guys and just it's just there's nothing better than that. <laughs> well, I think uh, I think for most people that have never come because we never met a large animal vet before we came here and had right. our sheep. So I think uh, there's a lot of people don't understand <clears throat> exactly how intense that practice is you're always on I'm always on yeah 24-7 right. on call so I work yeah. in a practice I my own practice and by myself uh, if I get sick or I want to go on holiday I have to find somebody to right cover me to yeah. look after my clients and yeah but you're just you're on the road it's heavy lifting it's yeah it's all it's very hours physical. of the day and yeah. night you know yeah so I know we've called you all hours of the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the animals just don't seem to respect the fact that people need sleep so they just yeah. get in trouble in the middle yeah. of the night for some reason but yeah. you know that's okay that's and part I, of it I think another big um, misconception or not misconception people don't even think about it like I thought when we first got our sheet that we would be calling the vet to come and do all the vaccinations yeah, and everything we teach you how to do you all that stuff yeah yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just take yeah. care of the hard stuff. Who could afford that? Like, yeah. how yeah. clueless were we? Yeah. 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 And why would you even bother? Like, I yeah. would never waste Kim's time with that. Like, yeah. yeah. I yeah. guess people probably don't. Yeah, we do our own shots. Like, yeah. like yeah. we have a license to vaccinate. <laughs> it's it's right. Yeah. yeah. But true. I'd never get everything else done if you guys couldn't do all but that. But I think that that's an aspect of uh, other, like, being a, a large animal vet versus in a small, a small animal vet in a clinic is that you actually teach 
the farmers yeah. how to do the proceed like the yeah. simpler procedures yeah. and stuff I try as to well. make sure like even all my horse clients I try to make sure everybody at least knows how to give an injection in the muscle and under the skin right you know right. how to how to give warmer and yeah. how to do you know with, with sheep like how to trim feet even you know things yeah. like that yeah. yeah yeah and that frees you up to deal with the real emergencies That's right. where the vets are sitting there like oh when's she gonna yeah, because you know, there's the something farmer. that they need help with. I was worried about the farmers. So yeah. I call yeah. myself a vet. Oh my lord. <laughs> okay, <no. laughs> okay, so um, everybody is sort of aware in our community. I think that there's been some negative press circulating about the shearing of sheep and how we harvest wool uh, yeah. in this country. And uh, we'd love it if you could just explain a little bit why shearing is actually beneficial for the sheep and what you think about the process. Oh, yeah. And after you answer this question, um, we're just going to pause and I'm going to show a little video from our um, our sheep shearing, which is very brief because, you know, Instagram only allows you 15 seconds. So it's only mm -hmm. short because of that. But yeah, tell us what you think about the whole First of all, were you aware there was a controversy about shearing? Because it was actually a complete shock to us. I was shocked, actually. And I don't know why. I guess just because you grow up doing these things and it's normal. But, um, like, you know, there's, like, it's it's like we go to the hairdresser to get our hair cut. Like, it's just part of, mm -hmm. you know, their wool continues to grow. If you don't take care of it, if you don't keep it shorn, um, you know, they it, it's like a magnet for straw and hay and manure and urine. And, and that all cakes in there. And it's a huge source of infection like parasites and skin mm. infections if you don't get that off and let it replenish itself the way it's meant to mm. be replenished mm -hmm. and the wool in it has to grow out properly in order for them to even regulate their own body temperature which mm -hmm. is so important they use that wool to regulate their body temperature in hot and cold in right? hot and cold yeah. yeah it cools them down in the heat and it warms them up in the cold mm -hmm. and but it has to grow out properly to do that and it can't do that when it's all matted and caked with dirt and debris mm -hmm. so you have to clean that off it's just this exactly the same as us going to get the split ends trimmed off of our mm -hmm. our hair so or that it shaving. stays healthy or men shaving yeah mm -hmm. like it just it just replenishes new hair growth and and keeps the whole thing healthy mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Like just maintaining airflow through that system, yeah. that thermal regulation system, if that were all caked up and matted. Yeah. Uh, and when you raise a fine fiber flock like Coradale, well, they're not, they're a medium, but especially if you've had a fine fiber, it will mat, you know, mm -hmm. on the surface a little bit. So you, you do have to watch for that, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, like if things are caked on there, especially if the, the mats get like tight down to the skin it pulls it hurts it's physically mm -hmm. painful for them mm -hmm. and then it's just you know moisture gets in and then it just breeds infection you mm -hmm. know and so you got to keep that clean cleaned mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i've yet to see a sheep that mine's getting shorn more than my dog mine's having its nails trimmed yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good analogy. so yeah so i mean it's got to be done yeah. yeah so it is really important and i think in all areas of animal husbandry of course there is room for people to make mistakes or not do things the way oh, yeah. we would all like but you you i think fiber farms are some of the most open farms in the world you know you can we have a fiber trail we invite you to go visit 20 different fiber destinations here on pei and come see us and you can certainly see our sheep here grazing and uh, I think it's it's relatively accessible for everybody if they still have concerns just to make sure that the wool that they're knitting with comes from a good place or it comes from Canada because we have quite a rigorous code of practice for sheep producers here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically a set of guidelines that we're all expected to follow. Um, and I think most producers that I know probably exceed that, that code oh of practice goodness, in yeah. the care of their sheep. So when you first go to a new sheep call, um, what are the kind of things that you're looking for to, to educate on or what are you typically looking for in a well-maintained flock? Um, I look at the cleanliness of the barn first off and the cleanliness of the sheep and then I look at things like, you know, health status. So, you know, you look at the sheep and they're all coated in wool, you want to get your hands on them, make sure they're fleshy underneath that, you know, that, they're, that they have good body condition underneath that mm -hmm. wool. And I also look at the eyes, especially, and make sure that, you know, the pink and the eyelids is nice and pink and not mm -hmm. pale, because that's an indication of parasite problems usually, mm -hmm. and anemia. So those are the big things that I look for. And, you know, just access to lots of good quality hay. And, mm -hmm. We talked yeah. a lot about uh, when you were here for a visit a couple days ago, or <laughs> whatever, yeah. about fresh air too, and yeah, ventilation. So and, yeah. yeah, I treat more animals sick that are locked up with 
bad ventilation than the ones that are, you know, have the option of having fresh air or nice airy burns. Like, it's so important. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, we love our sheep outside. You know, oh, burns so- <laughs> are, are are also receptacles for germs and, you know, and ventilation is so important, fresh air. Yeah. So outside is really better. Oh, it's yeah. so much better. Like, I treated three herds of cows, like, a week or two ago because they were locked inside when the weather was going up and mm-hmm. down and they didn't have access to the outdoors and getting fresh air and they just took pneumonia. And, you know, yeah. that's so yeah. common and... You know, we think of ourselves wanting to be tucked up next to the fireplace, but, yeah. you know, these animals are bred to be yeah. exposed yeah. outside. That's what they grow their coats for. Yeah. And, and people know. underestimate the amount of condensation that respiration of, of yeah. tons and tons <laughs> of cows or tons and yeah. tons of sheep will create inside a building. It's almost yeah. like forcing them to live inside a swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. Um, nearly. Yeah. 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 The humidity just builds up and it's just their lungs. For the size of their bodies, ruminants are made up of mostly stomach. Right. And their lungs are actually so small mm-hmm. and, and they produce so much moisture and you know when they're breathing that in it's just a recipe for disaster yeah. I just I pulled in and I went down to the barn and I'm admiring all your sheep standing outside in yes. a snowstorm you know in a nice like air break area like windbreak yeah. area yeah. you know but they're they have the choice of going in and yet yeah. they're all standing outside yes <laughs> yes in the snow and it's, it's a really snowy thing. snowy day here today yeah. so it's like, <laughs> we're in the middle of a blizzard yeah yeah, yeah, I'm, in, yeah. I'm in barn clothes because i thought we would be in the barn yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but they're outside of course and, and it's too outside. windy to film outside it is, but, yeah. yeah okay well i think that's great and i think people probably learned quite a bit um okay. just from that little overview of what's involved in keeping sheep and uh, we've learned everything from our vets yeah. we knew nothing honestly yeah. we've relied really really heavily on great veterinary assistance and we're fortunate to have really good access to a lot of great experienced vets yeah. so mm-hmm. so thank you and thank, thank you, you for coming yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. just a couple other little administrative things i guess if you're local to us um, we are doing a My First Sweater class. Yes. Yeah. So starting, I think, January 23rd or right. somewhere in there. And it runs for six weeks, but it's four classes because you need two weeks off in the middle to actually knit yep. the bulk of the sweater. And uh, this is my flax, and it was my first attempt at modifying a sweater right. pattern and really trying to make it fit my body, which is a bit weird because I have the big firmer shoulders and then nothing after that. So I'm... <laughs> I'm actually, it's two different sizes that I have on, sort of like a large and a medium. Right. And uh, I, I, I love it. it. I think I did a great yeah. job of yeah. it, I will say so. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take people through that process. So the tickets are available on our website. If you're local to us, then come join us. Mm-hmm. And we're going to go through that. And of course, this yeah. is a tin can knits pattern and they're wonderful simple collection is is designed for teaching and it's they're dreamy so dreamy yeah. and they put so much work into it for something that's free so generous though. i know like the and videos it's and the, so well yeah. done like yes. what more could you ask for yes. so we're just big fans and um yeah we're looking forward to doing that class and also in january we're going to have our first knit along so yes. go ahead and join our Ravelry thread and hopefully you can also join us on our knit along and that's right. all I'm going to say about it because it's still, it's not coming up till next year and right now it's top secret, but we are going to do one and we're really right. excited about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So should we talk about our little pins? Yeah. I was just going to say what we were wearing. But, oh, okay. But yeah, our neighbor, Lori Joyce Smith, who is a children's book author and illustrator and right. she's just such a joy. Well, her middle name is Joy. Yeah. <laughs> I guess she really felt she had to live up to that. Yeah. Um, PDI is cool. We're like an artist colony. There's really so many creative right. people that live here. And I think the landscape and sort of the culture is just designed for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we get to meet so many interesting people. But anyway, she has a couple of published books. Uh, you can follow her on Instagram. I'll put all her details in the notes. And uh, she made, the, she's felting now. Yes. Yes, she's using our wool to film. Yeah, and yeah. she made the uh, adorable peppermint yeah. things, and she's actually adopted a couple of sheep. So she now has two sheep, and one of them came from us, um, and her name is Martha, and she's the girlfriend to Albert, the yes. Icelandic that she adopted as a bottle lamb, and they're yes. just living the dream over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, they are spoiled. Pets. yes. Yeah, and uh, she does little drawings of them and things. And she's her children... Like, 
brush them regularly. Yeah, they're brushed daily. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's not going to be anything left to spin. <laughs> Albert is a is a is. A, is he a Shetland or Icelandic? Icelandic. Icelandic. So his, yeah. his fleece gets quite long. So we all, we laugh among ourselves about every yeah. time Jen goes over and sees them every now and then. And we think of him as like a Prince Charming. That Yeah. Oh, his locks his are locks literally are... blowing in the wind. <laughs> and you know, Martha being from a more traditional farm background. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's a, little... a little less high maintenance. Yeah. Well, she's kind of like Albert. Dude. Get <laughs> She's like, yes. get some, get some mats in there. Like, let's, let's go roll in some burrs. Like, you know, let's do farm stuff. Yeah. But Martha has spunk. Lori hates when I make fun of Albert. Oh, Sorry, Lori. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, they're a great couple. Let's say that. Yes. And they have a very good life and it's wonderful to get to see them. Uh, and I do go visit them quite often and we help them, you know, Lori with all their care and everything like just because it's their first sheet. So. Yeah. So yeah, just really cool to get to meet some of the people that we get to meet living out here. Right. And now she's felting, which is just yeah. amazing. And this this is very characteristic of her style yes. of illustration. And she actually illustrated a little Thanksgiving story that we posted on our blog right. uh, for it's Canadian really Thanksgiving. It's on our blog, and it's adorable. Yeah. She she turned our a couple of our better known sheep into characters and illustrated them. And yeah. honestly. It was so generous of her to yes. do that because that's her job mm -hmm. and uh, not to help us live out our cartoon fantasies. Right. Our and sheet. we should say that Claire uh, wrote yeah. the story. And the Claire story. mocks on Waltz, one of yeah. our really good customers, uh, wrote the story that goes along with. So if you haven't seen that, it's worth checking out. It's right. really cute. So it's yeah. basically like a sheep's Thanksgiving and uh, it's a children's story. It could actually be a book. Yeah. Way to go, Claire. Yeah. Way to go, Lori. Right. Yeah. Perfect. So that's the story of these pins and we love them. Yeah. And we can't and they were just on the door handle with a little yeah. Christmas card. So we're very yes. lucky. We have a nice community here. Right. All I right. see that you have pom-poms out there. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, there's a couple other things. Yeah. So number one, um, if you didn't see already, we launched a new colorway. So I'm really trying to be restrained about launching new colors. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I'm doing well. This is one, and you probably saw it already, but it's called Amethyst Brooch, and of course I've named it after the, the part of Anna Green Gables right. where Marilla loses her brooch. And uh, I'm a huge fan of the 80s and miniseries. I can't get past it. Like, it's still my favorite, and uh, I could watch it 150 times. I'm sure I have. I know I did back in the 80s, and now I'm doing it regularly again as it's an adult. It's still just as good. And the acting in this part, and it's just, I yeah. love it. Like, they, they're they so great. Um, Colleen Dewhurst and Megan Follows. It's, it's so worth watching. It's a great holiday mm -hmm. film, and you can buy the, the DVD. So I literally own a VCR just, or what is it, a DVD player, yeah. <laughs> just so I can watch this miniseries. Because right. I don't, you can't get it on iTunes or anything, but you can buy it. Um, there's a site, the film, the film producer, I think, sells it online. So this is Amethyst Brooch. This is a really deep dark, luscious purple color, yeah. and um, the reaction to it has been really positive. And of course, it's in the hat I knit of Simone's. And we finally listed our handmade, yes. locally made faux fur pom-poms. And uh, they don't go in the wash, um, so you don't have to worry about the fibers getting into our water system, which is a pretty hot topic right now. These do not go in the wash. Please don't wash them. They'll mat up like a, like a, yeah. yeah. So they're, they've got snaps on them, yeah. um, and I understand they're yes. very well attached. Yes. We've tested them. They've yes. been field tested, and so yeah. what you do is you sew the, the other side of the snap. I don't even know if it, it's, it's very strong. It's a hard strong. snap, too. So yeah, I mean, and yeah. my nails are paper thin. Yeah, I'm going to try to do yeah. it. Okay. So essentially, I just wanted to show them the part that they sew on. Oh. Yeah, they're very strong. <laughs> oh, I've got it. Okay. So you oh, would sew too. this part on your, on your hat. And then you snap the pom-pom on, and then when it's time to go in the wash, you just take it off and then put it back on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no worries about the plastic fibers getting into um, our oysters, <laughs> which we eat a lot which of. Which is a hot topic right or, now. Or, God forbid, lobster. Oh, right. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this is another thing that we just listed online recently, and we are working to get more and more products online because we have free shipping over a hundred dollars within North America and it helps I think to be able to put a variety of things in your cart so that you're not mm -hmm. sort of forced to buy a hundred dollars worth of yarn. So we have books now, we have the line of magazines yeah. listed, um, whatever pom-poms we have, we have yeah. some pattern books um, and now now these. Yes, pom-pom magazine. 
Pom Pom Magazine, real pom poms. <laughs> poms of all kinds. Yes, but exactly. not pomegranates. No. <laughs> so we, as you can tell, we're probably a bit silly today. I don't yeah, know. It's fun. Christmas. We're feeling good. Yeah. We um, celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah here, so yeah. we're like a mixed celebration family. Even though my husband did light our kitchen table on fire accidentally last Hanukkah, so the enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bad. Uh, it, it wasn't good and it ruined my grandmother's uh, dining table that I inherited uh, like it was really on fire Luckily, no one was hurt. No poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway um, So whatever you're celebrating even if it's just your own family or whatever uh, We just wish everybody a really relaxing holiday and we hope we you take some time for some self-care and um, Just to share share the love with your family. That's what we're gonna do we're of course going to eat way more than we should. Our parents are coming over from Nova Scotia mm -hmm. and uh, it feels really like, you know, there's really some joy needed. Yes. I think, yeah. uh, I think um, you know, all the greetings of peace and that happiness that go around Christmas are really um, more meaningful lately. Yeah. And it's our important. and let's be clear, like our Christmas could not be less commercial. Yeah, we don't do. I, I haven't set foot in a mall in years. Yeah. I've not purchased anything online. We usually give handmade gifts, like you know, peppermint bark or something that we've made ourselves. Um, our mom gives us an LL Bean. We hand it. Hand it for yeah, we yeah. hand it stuff. I think everyone's by the looks of what I've been up to, everyone's getting a hat. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, our socks were kind of my thing for a while. Yeah, so. they yeah. take a long time. Though. Yeah, hats. Yeah, yeah hats okay. safer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's our wish for everybody, and we'll see you in the new year. Bye. Bye.